this vlog, I'm sharing a rod during the Duffer's fortnight with my old work colleague, and long-standing friend, Mark. <laughs> the Mayfly are out in numbers. We've managed to get a few hours in on the River Piddle and follow that with a longer session on the Friday fishing the river through. I've also got a very dodgy home tide Mayfly collection that I'm keen to put to the test. So very briefly, these are my river flies. I've got my nymphs up here, which is the larval stage of flies. Light pheasant tail nymphs down at the bottom gold ribbed hairs here and uh, in this box is the huge budgerigar sized things for Duffer's Fortnite. And then these are the smaller ones so you've got large dark olives at the top, other little olives at the top. All the sedge patterns when things get tough so we've got sparkle gnats and some very small sedges. As he did all the travelling I let him have the rod for most of our late Thursday afternoon on the River Piddle. True to character Mark was so enchanted by the first pool he flogged it to a froth for a good hour. He wanted to stay, I wanted to move on. Ah, the joys and compromises of sharing a rod quickly came home to us both. He got his fish though and we were happy. Well done, good stuff. My gentlemanliness faltered momentarily and I got my fish, a good one. I smugly resumed my role as chaperone. I think we may have seen a fish move. My excitement prompted me to come out with a barrage of condescendingly useful tips and suggestions for my good friend. He said nothing and settled on the fact that at least my turn had been short and he had the rod back in his hand. Damn it. It's you in this building. It's the pressure. I, I just can't take it. That was that. Beer, late dinner and sleep followed. It's 17 mile per hour winds, probably gusting to 20, 25. That cliff face gives us a little bit of shelter. Very nice, mostly synthetic, isn't it? Nearly all of it's synthetic yeah, materials. Okay. And uh, those wings make it make the line spin. So you're using like five, six pound line. Did you say you got a little micro, micro swivel came with it? Oh, it's plastic. Yeah. A plastic swivel, right, that makes sense. These flood meadows are lovely. I've sparrowhawks, barn owls, grass snakes, yeah. <laughs> all sorts. Watch your step, because there's the odd hole here or there. So it's not like your typical chalk stream. It's uh, not always clear, coloured bottom. In the trees, bit of cover. So the fly that I'm going to start off with is this creation. So this is the novice fly fisherman. Well, he's certainly got the length. Oh! Wasn't exactly committed, but then I wasn't exactly ready for it. Solitary fishing benefits my well-being. The best pleasures in life are nearly always the ones that we choose to share. One nil. Hadn't seen anything rise. I didn't actually know whether we'd get any rises, to be honest. No. Chewing the fat while laughing at our little dramas, like bad casting, lost fish, or getting a face full of nettles while avoiding an unintended swim. I think you need to move over, Rover. I'll take a couple of steps. I don't want to get too close to it. <clears throat> oh my God, what a lump. Then there's the fish. The second day started off very well. Two rises from two fish in the same pool, actively feeding on mayfly. I'm getting, I'm getting really excited now. It's ridiculous. And that was quite close, wasn't it? The amount of times my fly line must have gone over that fish. Yeah. Well, it looked like he charged it from the side, came at it from my side. One more crack at it, further up, and then change the fly, or let it rest, change the fly. Can I have a cast here, then? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to use one of my home tied. The bigger, the uglier, and the more ridiculous, the better. I'm going to go for that one, which will make a mess of my leader, no doubt, but it's huge. And Mark's going in for the dirty steel. There you go, and he's in. And he's out. <laughs> Justice! <laughs> oh dear, special branch. <coughs> Unlucky. Disgraceful behaviour, but I should have known better. Paul ruined, we moved up. After the exciting start, it became increasingly challenging. Fish didn't want to show, and those that did would glance, inspect, splash, or shy from the fly. Right, Mark has given up on this little stretch. I reckon there's a fish lying just 
there. <laughs> Whoa! That's the tire there. That's the tire. Yeah. I think these big fly patterns definitely need a, a, a thicker tapered leader to turn them over. Yeah, they're hard, aren't they? Yeah. It's sinking nicely under the surface as well. Yeah. Did you put mud on it or zinc? No, that's just natural. Yeah. Things, the more it gets twisted, the less it sinks. Yeah. Fun is now, as we came through that pool, two, two or three fish topped. Yeah. You come up into here and they've just stopped. Makes you wonder whether they have that domino effect of spooking one and it just Not goes up, just ricochets upstream. So I don't think we're sending a, like, pushing a bow wave up or anything like that. There's enough water going through. Oh, he's in. Well played. Weren't expecting that, were you? Not, because it's about the third time I've put a fly. On that spot. Oh, he's gone. Brilliant. He's gone, but that's good. That's called long distance unhooking. That is exactly what that was. That's the most yeah. natural form yeah. of unhooking. It thing. is. Thought I'd catch a little fish here, and I did. So over to you, Chaz. Thanks. That's the, the best thing about that you hooking that fish is it's my turn. <laughs> Your turn, unfortunately. Thank you. Nothing <laughs> like sharing a rod and enjoying the, sharing the, the pleasures of rises. Feel like forever did it mate that was a good fish you can see how why it's spooked because you look how shallow that water is it's about a foot deep yeah moving up I don't blame you now i've now i'm stood up here i can see why i was wasting my time back below <laughs> there's three explanations that i hear most frequently fussy and uncommitted trout rising to a dry fly during mayfly season. Number one, they're full up. Number two, they're wary from being caught. Number three. But all the fish we saw topping were on that far bank in shallow water, presumably because that's where uh, ephemera danica are coming out of the silt and they're probably eating them as they're emerging. See that rise? You're right on it. Come on, come up for it again. You deserve that fish. That was right on top of the rise, but I think you, you landed it as it, was, as it was resettling. More often than not, with all the above in mind, I think it's about the presentation of the fly. A longer leader, landing it gently, avoiding drift and drag in the currents, ensuring the tipping is subsurface. Well, go on, you've slapped it silly anyway. You may as well finish the job. Just get up there and, get up there and catch something. You, uh. <laughs> but I also wonder if spinner imitations or flies sitting high on the surface film represent a lower energy and nutrition value to the trout. Go for a delicate presentation, slow it right down. Get to just kiss the water like that. That's it, because that's it's a heavy fly and it lands with a splash, if you notice. Oh, come on. Splash. Yeah. Tricky though, because you had to sort of thump it through the wind, cut through the wind. Yeah, maybe a, a smaller. A, low, a much lower. Fly. Yeah, a smaller fly with less drag, again, less wind resistance will get you all improve your casting massively. Yeah. And your presentation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Didn't even take it, he's just splashing at it. Crack on, Mark, because I'm going to change my fly. On that note, I'm going to change my fly back to the one that I started off with and take that big budgerigar off. Yeah. 
I might then emerge or... After lots of fly changing and discussion about the ethics of whether Mark should put on a nymph or not, I eventually managed to catch a good fish on an oversized parachute creation. But Mark's confidence was waning. Actually, not. The alter ego super guide re-emerged. Show that fly. We had taken two rods to avoid arguing over choices of fly, but only used one at a time. Uh, if you want to have a look at my fly box, you're very welcome. Yeah, I might do that, actually. Well, those fly, but I was getting rises on those other. Yeah, but they're slappy risers, aren't they? Not going to happen, I'm afraid. Go past it if you want. Go past it or go and retrieve it if you want, because it's not like we were um, short on water to fish. Change fly game. Yeah. Just written all over it, come on. They've just got their heads down, I reckon. Hello, seems a couple of fish topping up there. What are you changing to? You nymphing. Really? Do you want to do that? But you're a disgrace to the country. <laughs> Yourself, me. <laughs> Seems a little extreme. Stinging nettles on my ears. Sun's gone out. Okay, sun's back out. <laughs> Wind's dropped. Wind's dropped. All we need now is big, big fish to rise just to. Bloop. Yeah, rub it in. Yeah, you would have thought so, wouldn't you? There you go. Oh, he came off. <laughs> Toss about to be a sprat. There'll be plenty of other big ones around the corner. Yeah, there's, I've seen plenty of And two on the right hand bank as well. So there you go, Mark. Put a Mohican. I've got, got one right here. They're bloody brilliant, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, that's, that, that really ought to get a tape. There you go. Oh, careful. Taking it around the corner. Good fish. No. It's a bruiser. That is an absolute tank. I'll follow him to the net. <laughs> well, if I was American, I'd give you a high five, but I'll just say, well done, old chap. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I think that's probably my largest wild brown trout. Beautiful fish. Well done, Mark. Get your hand down away from the tail. There you are. Lovely. Let's take a bit closer. up. Yeah, well done. Let's get back. Really cold now. I get out to warm up and put my Adam's fly on and sort out the tippet material. I'm using some fuller's clay with a tiny dab of washing up liquid in it and that just helps to sink the first few inches after the fly. And the other thing I like to do when a fly gets drowned like this is to um, give it a good old um, squeeze in it and the do mushroom. Can knacker the hackle a little bit, but if you try and air dry a big fly like that by swishing it back and forth, like you do with the little flies, you just end up with a load of line twist, which makes for poor presentation. 
Well, I just got out of the water because I was getting cold and my, in that time, my phone has run out of memory, so I couldn't record. And Mark has just caught three fish in a, in a trot uh, while I have my little drink, including this one. That's a cracker, well played. That's, look how fat it is as well. It's really heavy. Great fighting fish. Well done. What's the take like? Just like really slow, kind of just turned on it. You could tell it was a big fish. Yeah. I s took you into the... Uh, I thought you were going to lose it at one yeah, stage, actually. It's brilliant. Wicked. Nice to see you smiling. Glad yeah. you didn't go home. Yeah. The Mohican. The Mohican. Not one I've tied myself, but available from... Is that what they're Mill. actually called, Mohican? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting cold standing in this river. So next up, I'm going to fish an Adam's fly. Oh, I am it. Look what come off. Fingers. Mind if I put a cast in my ear? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I've had my fix now. I'll go. Now I've fished for three minutes. I'll let you carry on again. <laughs> Cheeky bugger. When are you going home? I've changed to the Adams. There's a lovely wildie, and I need to get it back. Okay. When are you going home? When are you going home? In about an hour. In about an hour, okay. Good. Good then. So does that give you some sort of priority, does it? Because you're going home in an well, hour. Well, you know, you could... Well, you think I'm staying on till... You think I want to stay on till nine? Oh, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> Lots of fish. I think she's saying no fish. I know, I don't know why. <laughs> right, well, I better go. This is a glassy pool, isn't it? it is. Classy, glassy pool, yeah. Oh, well, that was a fish. Oh, yeah. Ah, what'd I move it for? Not interested. That's a bit better. The thing is, I, I think the actual roll cast spooks fish. Yeah, it can be. Do you reckon that fish is actually like close, that close to the bank still, or do you think they're just moving around loads? Yeah. Didn't look like a particularly big fish, did it? No. Do you know what, it could have even been a mayfly coming off the water. The ripple was so small. Well, if there was a, a pool where you'd think you'd get a fish, it'd be under here, wouldn't you? Mm. Anyway, nothing had that natural one. Do you want to have a crack on the, um, underneath the next overhanging tree? Mm. Oh, nice. It is where that fish topped, isn't it? There you go. He's on. A nice fish as well. your net. It's staying deep. I'm trying to get them in quick. Go down the river. <laughs> Gonna need a bigger net. Oh no. Well, it's gone then. There we go. Get Whoa. in. The biggest of the day. <laughs> That's probably my, probably my best ever wild brownie. That's brilliant. Size of that. Right, now you can fish for as long as you like. <laughs> Look at that. 
That's the biggest wild brown trout I've caught. The biggest wild brown trout I've seen. Us. There we go. What's he done, sir? Oh, cracking fish over the moon with this. How about that for a wild fish? I think my best brownie. Wicked. It's getting back. I would kiss it, but. That's a beautiful fish, mate. Well done. <laughs> Wicked. Cheers. My fishing today has been great because there's been plenty of water to cast to. The piddle yesterday was very difficult because the gaps between the ranunculus weed were quite narrow. Mark has to go home, but he's going to carry on fishing until he reaches that bush. I'm not sure I could share a rod with just anyone. They would have to put up with me for starters. I'm a stickler for rules to the point of being a bore. Also don't like obsessiveness about sizes of fish, numbers of fish, or fear of blanking. I'm not very good at just staying quiet either and keeping my opinions to myself. Cast here, cast there, look behind that bush, look for the crease, change a fly. I have good fishing friends who I would never dream of sharing a rod with, and one or two friends who I have vowed never to share a rod with again. Sometimes it just doesn't work. You need to have similar outlooks to your fishing. It's a bit like sharing a boat, especially when it comes to making joint decisions. I've fished with Mark for a couple of decades now and used to work with him. And although we've disagreed when having to make joint decisions, we've always got on. And our foibles come as no surprise. I can't wait to get in the warmth. Yeah, same, really. Really to cold. Getting these bloody waders off. Oh, well, cheers for coming down. That That's was right. uh, it's really good, mate. Enjoyed yeah, it turned it. out all right, didn't it? Yeah, it wasn't uh, I was really nervous in the run up. I mean, sometimes it can be too nice, can't it? Whether it can be too nice. No, we both had some great today. My thanks goes out to Mark for another great moment shared.